Hey, I'm Ava. Before I dive into what happened, make sure you like and subscribe to hear more about how I turned my life around after being treated like nothing but a servant by my own family. Now, let's get into the story. It was a typical Thursday evening, and I was tidying up the kitchen while my mom and sister lounged in the living room, laughter echoing over the clink of their wine glasses. I paused, wiping the sweat from my brow with the back of my hand, and overheard them talking excitedly about something. Can you believe it, Sophia? Two whole weeks in Italy. My mother's voice was bubbling with excitement. Sophia, my sister, responded with equal enthusiasm. I know, Mom. The wine tours, the shopping, the beaches. It's going to be epic. And the best part? No schedules, no stress. Just pure relaxation. I leaned against the doorframe, a sinking feeling in my stomach. Are you guys talking about a vacation? They turned to look at me their expressions briefly flickering with something I couldn't quite catch before settling back into painted smiles. Yes, dear, but don't worry about it. You won't be able to come anyway. What with all the work here needing to be done? We wouldn't want the house falling apart, my mother said casually, as if she were commenting on the weather. Sophia chimed in. Yeah, Ava, someone has to stay and manage things. Plus, you know how you don't like flying. My heart pounded in my ears. So you two are just planning to go without even asking me? Leaving me here to handle everything? My mother waved her hand dismissively. Oh, come on, Ava. You know the house can't keep itself. And who else is going to take care of the pets and the garden? You're so good at it. I felt a flare of anger. That's not fair. I deserve a break, too. I'm not your housekeeper. Sophia laughed, a sharp, jarring sound. Oh, lighten up, Ava. We're just joking. But seriously, we need you here. Besides, you wouldn't enjoy the kind of places we're going to. Frustration boiled over, and I found myself shouting, It's not about the places. It's about being included. Being treated like part of this family. Not just someone who picks up after you. The room fell silent. My mother looked at me, her eyes narrowing slightly. We're just being practical, Ava. It's for the best. You'll see we'll bring you something nice. I stormed out, my mind racing. I couldn't believe how easily they dismissed my feelings, how quick they were to just leave me behind. As I headed to my room, their laughter resumed, as if I hadn't spoken at all. That night, as I lay in bed, the walls of my room felt like they were closing in on me. I realized I had to do something, make a change. There was no way I could continue living like this, invisible and unvalued. I grabbed my laptop and started planning. I needed to escape, to find a place where I could be seen and heard, not just used and discarded. As I looked at rental listings and job opportunities in other cities, a plan began to form. I wasn't going to be their servant anymore. I was going to find my own path, my own life away from their condescending smiles and casual cruelty. It was going to be hard, but I knew one thing for sure. I wasn't going to let them keep treating me like this. I was done being the invisible sister the dutiful daughter who sacrificed her own happiness for their comfort. As the sun rose the next morning, I felt a resolve strengthen within me. I was going to make them regret ever taking me for granted. But first, I had to escape. Just a week after the conversation that blew the lid off my simmering resentment, I found myself at my friend Jenna's apartment, venting about the whole ordeal. Jenna was always the type to cut right to the heart of the matter. Ava, this isn't just about a vacation. It's about how they've treated you your whole life. You're their go-to for everything they don't want to handle themselves. I sunk deeper into the couch, nodding. I know, and I'm so tired of it. I'm just... I'm at a breaking point. You need to get out, Ava. Like, for real this time. Move out. Start fresh somewhere they can't just dump their responsibilities on you. The idea sparked something in me. A plan began to take shape, fueled by Jenna's encouragement and my own desperate need for change. I've been saving up some money on the side. I could probably afford a small place. See? You're halfway there already, Jenna exclaimed. What's stopping you? The usual. Fear. Guilt. The usual suspects when it comes to family. Ava, if you don't put yourself first, who will? You deserve to be happy and free from all this toxicity. Her words resonated with me, pushing me towards action. Over the next few days, I started looking for apartments in secret. Each listing I viewed was like a breath of fresh air a glimpse into a life where I could be my own person, not just an extension of my family's needs. As I prepared to move, I did it gradually to avoid arousing suspicion. A book here, a piece of clothing there, 
anything I could easily explain away if caught. My heart raced every time I moved a box to Jenna's place for safekeeping. But with each item packed, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. One afternoon, while Sophia and my mother were out, I took a bigger step. I packed most of my personal documents and some sentimental items. It felt surreal, like I was watching someone else take these decisive steps towards freedom. The day before they were due back from their trip, I was at Jenna's, going over the final details. You're sure about this, right? Because there's no going back once you leave, Jenna asked, a slight edge of concern in her voice. I've never been more sure about anything. This, this is for me. I need to do this, not just for my sanity, but for my future. That's the spirit, Ava. Look, I'll help you move the last of your stuff tonight. We'll get a pizza. Make a night of it. That night, as we loaded up Jenna's car under the cover of darkness, I felt a mix of fear and exhilaration. Each box felt like a declaration of my independence, each step away from that house a step closer to a new beginning. The final night in my old room, I didn't sleep much. I kept replaying things in my head, wondering if I was making the right decision. But as dawn broke, I knew it was now or never. I took one last look around the house, this place that had been both my home and my prison. With each step through the halls, I felt the weight of years of being overlooked and undervalued lift off my shoulders. I went to my room and grabbed the last of my belongings, a duffel bag filled with essentials and a few keepsakes I couldn't bear to leave behind. Everything else, all my other possessions, I had already moved out in secret, with Jenna's help. Sitting at the kitchen table, I pulled out the letter I had written days ago. It was short and to the point, a final goodbye to the life I was leaving behind. Mom, Sophia, I can no longer live a life where I am not seen or valued. This is not a spur-of-the-moment decision, but one I have considered deeply. Please respect my need for space, and do not attempt to contact me. I wish you both the best. Ava. Sealing the envelope, I left it where they couldn't miss it, right next to the pile of unpaid bills and unopened mail. I didn't linger. Taking my bag, I stepped outside, locking the door behind me one last time. The finality of that click was both terrifying and exhilarating. I had arranged for a taxi to meet me a few streets over, avoiding any curious neighbors. As I walked towards the rendezvous, the reality of what I was doing began to sink in. I was really leaving, stepping out on my own, without a safety net. The taxi arrived, and as I got in, I didn't look back. The drive to my new apartment was a blur of emotion, but mostly I felt a profound relief. My new apartment was small, but it was mine. Setting my bag down, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. It was the first space that was truly my own, free from the expectations and demands of my family. That night, I unpacked, setting up my few possessions and making the space feel like home. The silence of the apartment was not oppressive but promising, filled with the sounds of my new beginning. That first night in my new home, I lay in bed listening to the quiet hum of the city. It was different from the silence at my old house. This was a silence filled with potential, with the promise of peace and new adventures. As I drifted off to sleep, I knew I had made the right decision, difficult as it was. I was finally free. When Mom and Sophia returned from Italy, they stepped into a home that was starkly different from the one they left. Gone was the order and calm I had maintained. In its place, chaos and neglect greeted them. Mail piled up at the entrance, plants drooped for want of water, and a tangible silence hung heavy in the air. Mom found the letter I had left on the kitchen table. As she read it, her expression shifted from confusion to realization, and then to sorrow. She let out a deep sigh, the weight of her regrets palpable. Why would Ava leave without talking to us? Sophia asked, her voice tinged with frustration and disbelief. Mom was quiet for a moment before responding. We took her for granted, Sophia. Maybe we pushed her too far this time. Adjusting to life without me proved harder than they anticipated. Simple tasks like meal planning and bill paying, which I had silently managed, now loomed large and challenging. They struggled to fill the void I left. Their daily routines disrupted. As news of my departure spread, reactions among family and friends varied. Aunt Clara expressed her support, leaving a voicemail that I listened to one evening. Ava, I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself. If you need anything, just call. Conversely, Uncle Joe was critical. His message was clear. 
Ava, you can't just abandon your family. We need to talk. At community gatherings, whispers followed Mom and Sophia. At the grocery store, Mrs. Lawson, a family friend, didn't hesitate to voice her opinion loudly. You know, Ava kept everything together. It's a real shame. Sophia's reply was sharp, a knee-jerk defense. Ava chose to leave. We didn't force her out. Their home felt increasingly like a shell, a space echoing with the absence of my presence. One evening, as they sat amidst unsorted laundry and unmade plans, the strain became too much. We can't go on like this, Sophia declared. Maybe we should apologize, try to bring her back. Mom shook her head, weary. I don't think Ava wants to come back, nor should she if this is how we treat her. We need to learn to manage on our own. Through their challenges, they began to realize just how much they had relied on my compliance and quiet labor. Their days were now filled with the tough lessons of self-sufficiency, each task a reminder of the daughter and sister they had taken for granted. For me, each day away from them strengthened my resolve, confirming that the path I chose was right. As they grappled with their new reality, I embraced my freedom, building a life of respect and self-worth. Months had passed since I left the suffocating atmosphere of my old home, and now, each day unfolded with newfound freedom. My job at a local bookstore was more than just employment. It was where I was respected and my contributions valued. My colleagues had become friends, and the community I'd found welcomed me with open arms. One quiet evening, my phone lit up. A call from Mom. I answered, my heart tight with a mix of curiosity and caution. Ava, it's Mom. We've been thinking about you a lot, and we're sorry. Truly. We miss you, and we want you to come home. Her voice was shaky, filled with regret. I paused, taking a deep breath before responding. Mom, I appreciate the apology, but I can't come back. I found a place where I feel respected and valued, something I never felt at home. There was silence on the other end, heavy with unspoken emotions. I understand, Ava. Just know that we are very sorry, and we love you. I know, Mom, and I love you too, but I need to stay where I am. Ending the call, I felt a mix of sadness and strength. I had affirmed my decision, sure now more than ever that I had made the right choice. Weeks passed, and texts from Sophia trickled in, each softer and more reflective than the last. Maybe one day we can reconnect, she wrote. Perhaps we could, but on new terms, terms of equality. Walking through the park near my new apartment, I reflected on my journey. The trees whispered above me as if sharing in my contemplation. I had not only changed my surroundings, but had transformed myself. I had found my voice and reclaimed my worth. Leaving had reshaped my relationship with my family, and importantly, with myself. Some bonds, once stretched too thin, do not mend. But in their place, I had woven new ties, stronger and more supportive than ever before. As I looked up at the clear sky, Framed by vibrant foliage, a deep sense of peace settled over me. This life, built on self-respect and new beginnings, was mine to cherish. Every day was a chance to shape a future filled with joy, on my own terms. And for the first time, I was genuinely looking forward to each new day. Ava chose to leave her family for her own well-being. Was this the right decision? Share your thoughts below. Like and subscribe for more stories.